of us, like for us, and you know, it checks our other status, it checks uh, reservations, and uh, a lot of apps works for us actually. And many streaming applications that you know suggest songs, movies, it's, it suits our mood, location, and uh, the time where we are. So everyday activity, everything that we do in, a, in our daily activity includes AI directly or indirectly. So we are interacting with AI, artificial intelligence directly or indirectly every day. So uh, integrating artificial intelligence into Drupal DXP is going to make a leap in the user experience. So that's a topic about. So it's about the synergy between AI and digital uh, experiences it, uh, has become so intertwined that it feels like a magic. So why I picked the word magic is like my four-year-old son at home, like whenever he uses the virtual assistant, he asks for a rhyme, it sings. He asks for a question, it answers. He asks for any 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 topic, it replies. It asks for animal sound, he replies. So he feels it's magic. He asks me, like, mommy, it's a magic. It, she talks everything. She tells everything. That's true, right? Like even I feel it's a magic. Everything with AI is like a magic. I know there is other part. We we'll come to that later. But for now, let's stick to the magic that AI provides to us. So this session is all about how we can incorporate this magic into our websites and give a captivating experience to the end users. So moving on uh, to the topic, so we have two, two uh, you know, lead cast in this uh, show, one is like Drupal. So uh, we know Drupal as a content management system from its uh, you know, existence, like from 2000. But the like, majority of its existence is considered as a, like a Drupal content, uh, sorry, content management system. Where like the uh, website owner uh, create content, uh, you know, publish them to the end users. But uh, with the growing needs of the end users and the advancement in technology, our community has took a leap, moving the Drupal from a con traditional content management system into a uh, what to say, a comprehensive uh, digital experience platform, which allows integrating with multiple third-party tools, allows personalization capabilities, and allows multi-channel delivery. So that is a huge leap and that provides a captivating experience for the end user. That is what we are actually targeting in our business, right? So moving on to the next um, task here, that is like AI. So AI is definitely a buzzing word. Like wherever you go, whatever you talk, whatever you do, you will hear AI at least once in a day. Am I correct? So we hear AI. Wherever we go, what topic we discuss, AI comes in. AI is a buzzing word, definitely. It is, what is AI? So it is about, like it is a... Uh, human intelligence, okay, it is about, uh, you know, a simulation of human intelligence and missions is programmed to perform certain tasks that typically needs human intelligence, like um, thinking, reasoning, problem solving, and, uh, you know, other activities which typically needs human intelligence. That's what AI does. So uh, AI not only revolutionizes the way the business progresses, not, not only revolutionizes the way the economy progresses, it also changes the way we have our life every day. All our everyday activity is getting uh, upgraded or impacted by an AI. So AI plays a crucial role in our uh, interaction with the digital world. So uh, this is about AI. So why Drupal, DXP and AI must meet? So businesses are consistently or like constantly seeking innovative ways to elevate their online presence. Am I correct? So everybody wants to meet their customer expectations. Everybody wants to fulfill their user needs. And they want to have their consistent online presence. And it's all because like, they want to uh, retain their customers. They want to have more customer uh, releases and they want to have more business. So this is achievable by integrating AI with an exceptional uh, you know, platform Drupal. So that is all about like Drupal, DXP and AI meeting. And um, moving on to what will happen in Drupal, DXP meet AI. So first is like AI brings an intelligence to the process. So the entire process of digital experience so that, is, that we are providing to the user brings an AI, AI brings an intelligence to, process, to the process. So it, it, it silently observes what the user does on our website. It observes what the user browses. It observes what the user patterns. And it identifies what the user prefers. It knows what, I, what user likes, what user doesn't like. And it provides an, uh, you know, detail that how we can engage our end users, how we can retain our end users. So Drupal, uh, DXP meets AI gives a captivating user experience that is definitely achievable with this integration. And um, so let's see some of the AI driven enhancements in DXP. I have picked, you know, top and most important AI driven enhancements. One is like personalization and recommendation. And next is conversation interfaces <coughs> and then automated content management, enhanced search, 
data analytics and insights. Moving on to the first topic, which is about personalization and recommendation. So what is personalization? So personalization is an approach where we deliver tailored experience to the end user, right? So it is all about thinking about what customer will like. So it is an approach or it is a strategy where we keep customer, you know, in center and front. We, uh, uh, we, uh, we, what to say, we analyze what customers like, what the customer don't like, what engages them the most on the website. So the moment we understand what our end user like, the best in the website, the way we interact or way we deliver the website to the end users will totally take a new toll. It will change totally and it will enhance the user experience. So, uh, but why personalization is uh, important? Why vital? So, uh, <clears throat> let's take this like, we are, we are in an era where customers does not, you know, uh, does not, doesn't want to stick with like one size fit all digital experience. They want like relevance, they want engagement, they want to connect between the digital application they are interacting with. Do we? Like everybody definitely needs to connect with the digital application we are interacting with, right? So that is achievable with personalization. So uh, let's take a scenario, like uh, let's assume our user lands on the home, uh, like our website and uh, we have two options of presenting the home page. One is like a generic home page, like with a generic content. The other one is like a home page with uh, a personalized content that is matching the user preference and uh, you know, article suggestions matching the user preference, colors matching the user preference, uh, product recommendations matching the user preference. Definitely user will prefer to stick to the option B, that is, which is more personalized, most, more relevant to his interest and, you know, his likes. So that's what personalization targets. So personalization is actually an overarching technology where, it, you know, it, it interacts with users in multiple ways. Like it might be a content personalization, it can be an uh, um, experience personalization, interface personalization, or it can be a uh, what to say, like a recommendation system. So recommendation again, it is a part of personalization. It is a subset of personalization where it specifically targets delivering, uh, you know, the elements, identifying the elements that are uh, specific or like relevant to the user's preferences. So the goal of personalization and recommendation is to enhance user engagement and provide satisfaction and delivering content and experience that align to the user interest and needs. So next, moving on to the benefits of personalization and recommendation. So the default benefit is enhanced user experience, user engagement, and we can also achieve dynamic content delivery. So it is not just we are storing the past user preferences, browsing history and the details, and then we are analyzing the data and getting the you know, content delivery or personalization done here. It is also possible the AI tools to track the current current you know, user behaviors, patterns, and uh, their interest, and based on which the uh, content delivery can be achieved dynamically. And next is adaptability to user. So based on various or different groups of users' preferences and their likes, the, uh, the personalization can be achieved to every user's needs. So that is one. The AI tool has the capability to uh, understand what every user needs, what every user likes, what every user can you know, uh, pre uh, prefer to have in the website. So that is achievable with uh, AI tools. And next is uh, data-driven decision making. So definitely with all the data that is available, which we capture and we, we, we analyze, we can make a lot of uh, informed decisions with the data which we capture. So we can decide which content will reach the user, which content will not make the user happy, which interface will make the user more engaging in the website. So that is one, and also increased conversion rates. So with all these possibilities, definitely the retention rate of the user on the website is very high. It will be very high, and uh, the conversion rate, that is like the users coming back to the website will also be high. So uh, that is all about the benefits. And moving on to the types of personalization recommendation, we have a lot of types. Like one is like content recommendation, another one is like uh, user journey personalization. We can uh, do product and service personalization, and email personalization, search personalization, social recommendations, like which social activities can be recommended to the user, event recommendations. So if a person is in a particular location, the events around the location can be recommended to the user, and knowledge-based recommendation based on their interest, respect, uh, respect for articles, uh, podcasts, and uh, you know, uh, uh, blogs can be recommended to the user. So these are the types of uh, recommend personalization and recommendations. And uh, moving on to the techniques. So we have a lot of techniques involved in uh, personalization and recommendation. So starting from machine learning, NLP, and you know, con uh, filtering techniques. So let's start with the machine learning techniques. One is like clustering algorithms. We, we know like these algorithms helps to group 
the um, uh, content based on the preferences based on the attributes so that helps to uh, you know club the content and deliver to the respective user groups and uh, we have uh, nlp techniques like named entity recognition like ner which helps to identify the entity in the content and tag the entities based on which the content can be delivered to the users with respect to preferences and it uses intent recognition where it identifies what is the intent of the content what is the intent that can be shared with the end users and sentiment analysis if we can understand what is the sentiment behind the content and uh, we have other techniques like collaborative filtering and content based filtering that is basically a recommendation techniques and when when it comes to collaborative filtering it is about like identifying the user preferences based on the other relevant user preferences and the item preferences so we have two types in collaborative filtering it's like uh, uh, user behavior based collaborative filtering where like let's say um, a user x likes ai and user y with similar preferences might also like ai so that's the reference or the preference we identify based on the uh, user behavior uh, uh, collaborative filtering technique and the other one is like item based let's say like user x likes ai user x might also like ml so there the re relevant between the items can be established and the uh, products can be delivered to the uh, users and next is content based filtering it is like uh, we can map the contents which are relevant to the user preferences so we collect the contents that are like with similar attributes together and we collect with users who are like having similar preferences together so where we can establish a mapping between the user preference or like user groups who like to have an attribute x and the product with attribute x can be mapped to them that can be shown to them that can be recommended to them so that is achieved that is achievable using content based filtering so we can also have uh, we also have predictive analysis where we predict what the user might like so using these techniques we can predict what the user might like what the user might prefer to look into our websites and we have time series analysis where like uh, the collection of the information based on the times are analyzed and plotted to identify how the uh, you know responses or preferences vary based on the time for example the market rate might be like high at this point market rate might low might be low at this point and you know uh, the travel uh, for particular destination might be very high at this uh, season and for this and particular uh, you know destination might vary at a particular season so all these time series analysis you know all, all these can be handled with time series analysis and next is context of our recommendation so this technique helps to understand the context of the uh, user expectation so it is not just what user prefers it understand what user expects from you to understand the context and based on which the recommendations are done to the user so these are some of the techniques i have picked actually and um, moving on to the tools uh, uh, i have picked couple of tools so uh, one is like acquia personalization which speaks majorly about uh, user segmentation we can do user profiling user grouping user segmentation and uh, we use content targeting like we can deliver content you know to the specific targeted users and uh, we have recommendation engines which suggest which which product can be delivered to you know to the respective uh, target groups and it also handles behavioral tracking of the uh, user and moving on to the next tool it is optimizely this is specifically for experimenting and optimization so it does a lot of ab testing so it does it uh, tests a lot of ab testing identifying which uh, content or which data reaches the use which group of users so based on repeated ab testing uh, the uh, and, and the experimentation experimentation results the optimization of the uh, personalization is achieved using this technique using this tool and next is uh, lift igniter so this provides real time personalization recommendation that is it captures the data uh, in real time and the responses and recommendations are done near real time li and uh, it it has a scalability ability so it grows with the user uh, you know growing user base uh, and it provides uh, real time analytics data and it provides predictive modeling uh, support as well so next is vu e.ai this is specifically for retail industry and i like actually liked this tool because like uh, i found a lot of uh, interesting uh, elements here like one is like visual search rather than typing and you know giving uh, information i can do a visual search i can post an image and i can ask for the relevant image for the from the uh, uh, website and next is like it provides size recommendation it provides style guiding it uh, you know it automates the fashion designing and it, it it specifically automates the entire merchandising like the inventory management is automated here and next is uh, amazon personalized it is a it, it does again supports the real time recommendations and it has an, it has an automated ml uh, you know support where the uh, machine learning algorithms are available where the developer can use them personalize them to their uh, based on the requirements 
And next is IBM Watson personalization. Again, this provides real-time personal personalization technique and uh, it does behavioral analytics and reporting. So reporting in the form of a dashboard, which helps to track the uh, you know customization and personalization from a dashboard. And next is dynamic yield. So this is again supports um, email and mobile app personalization and uh, unified platform like where multiple channels of uh, personalization can be grouped together in a single dashboard or a single instance that is achievable and dynamic yield. So this is all about personalization recommendation. Moving on to the next, it is conversational interface. So uh, yeah, so conversational interface is like, uh, it is a technology where we enable humanist communication. So where, uh, you know, uh, we allow the users to interact with the system in a more natural language. And in turn, these interfaces uh, understand the, uh, uh, you know, input, user input, interpret them and identify and respond to the user in more natural language, making the entire communication between a human and the machine in a natural way, in a natural communication way. So uh, this, you know, uh, the goal of conversational interface is to make human computer interactions more, uh, you know, in a natural way. So we use a lot of uh, techniques in, uh, you know, for this conversational interfaces and uh, it, is, it is achieved by chatbots, virtual assistants, voice, voice assistants, and it's all possible with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the benefits. So conversational interfaces, uh, you know they are they are they provide real time engagement they are available or they can respond instantly and they provide 24 by 7 availability so whenever the user reaches the, in, the interfaces are available to respond to the uh, quest and uh, they have an efficient problem resolution technique so they can handle or they can identify what exactly the user needs and they respond uh, uh, instantly for that and it also helps content discovery next is it provides multilingual support with the integration of multilingual uh, uh, translation models it uh, supports multilingual well, uh, uh, you know, conversations and it provides multi-channel interaction like where the user can interact, uh, it can handle interactions across multiple channels like website, mobile, uh, email and all different channels can be handled together and, uh, and maintained. And next is consistent user experience. So it is not like there will be a dip or drop in the performance. So the, con the perf user experience which, uh, you know, which this conversation inter interfaces provide is like very consistent across the, uh, throughout the website. And uh, it scales based on the growing user base. The more information they get the more information or more interaction it gets from the user the more it grows and you know it, it learns from the user inputs it trains like we can train the model repeatedly based on the user and new user inputs we get and we can uh, you know uh, scale the uh, tool based on the requirements and next is data driven insights again like here we can use the data uh, analytics and we can make informed decisions that what kind of responses can be given to the end users based on the user preferences and uh, next is automating routine tasks this is important like it's not just about talking or chatting. It's also about um, automating a lot of uh, you know routine tasks like um, some of the uh, chatbots helps to book tables for us, make reservations for us, check the order status for us. So all these automated ta routine tasks can be automated with the help of uh, uh, you know conversational interfaces and uh, time and cost saving. So it replaces a huge uh, uh, you know team who needs to sit consistently to handle and support the end users. So this saves a lot of time and cost when it comes to uh, you know, air conversational interfaces. And moving on to the types, we have uh, text-based chatbots. So these chatbots like where we can enter the text and we will get the response accordingly and otherwise like voice assistants where we use speech to you know, get the uh, uh, communication ha happen. And next is virtual assistance, which is like, it is beyond the chatbots. It's not just you know, uh, answering a question, it's beyond the, ch it's beyond the chatbot, where it helps to pro pro provide certain uh, information beyond like answering a particular question. And like multi-model chatbots, so this is actually like, uh, uh, it handles the various, various types of inputs, like it can be an image, it can be a voice, it can be a text. So it has the capability to handle different inputs and provide the response in such a way. And next is multilingual chatbots. Again, like it can support multiple language uh, inputs and uh, respond to the user in different languages based on the requirements. And accessibility chatbots, which is like, it, it, it focuses on inclusivity of the users. Like it addresses diverse user needs. And uh, you know, it, uh, for example, like uh, navigation support or uh, uh, screen reader compatibility uh, tools, like this will help the, uh, you know, it, this will help a wide uh, audience or wide uh, diverse group of audiences with different uh, needs. So uh, this is about the types of conversational interfaces. And next is uh, techniques. So 
whenever we talk about any content related uh, you know enhancement uh, nlp is default natural language processing is default like all natural language uh, processing techniques is involved in content management and content related enhancements we have intent recognition technique uh, which is used to understand the intent of the uh, uh, you know the co co content or the conversation or the query the user is posting to us and entity recognition again we ident we can identify what is the uh, we can identify and tag the entities in a query. For example, let's take a travel chatbot where the user posts that uh, I'm traveling to Paris. So in this, like the entity recognition will identify the terms like Paris and travel. So this will help the chatbots to identify what exactly the query is about and respond to accordingly. So the entities are captured, tagged, and the responses are provided accordingly. And next is score reference resolution. This is like, this provides uh, a relation between the content, making the uh, communication very natural way. For example, let's take the same example. So a user post in the chatbot that I'm traveling to Paris this week and I need to book flights for there. So which means like there is related to Paris. So this relationship is established with the help of, you know, core reference resolution technique. And we have dialogue management. This particular technique helps to maintain the conversational pattern in the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, conversational interfaces. It, it holds the dialogue management. And uh, we have automatic speech recognition, which is about Whenever a user gives the input via, like, you know, voice, speech, so that is recognized and converted into text, which will be further passed and identified, and the response will be given to the user accordingly. And next is text to speech. So, yeah, once the uh, once the data are analyzed and the responses are ready, and it will be converted into a speech again from the uh, structured data. So that is done with the help of text to speech technique and multi-turn conversations. So multi-turn conversations, it's like. Mm, where the user can interact in multiple. For example, let's take some of the chatbots where I say like I wanted to do this particular action and the chatbot will respond to me. And followed by that, I don't want to mention this name I, repeatedly again, rather it will get the context and maintain the conversational, like multi-turn conversational aspect of that. Like so every time I don't need to mention a specific term to remind the chatbot this is what we are talking about. So it will understand what exactly it is. It will stay with the context, it will retain the dialogue and it will, you know, ma ma maintain the multi-turn conversation with every user. So next is contextual understanding, yeah. So every uh, AI conversational interface understands the context behind it. It understands what context the user is trying to communicate. It, it breaks down the uh, query into simpler formats and understand the context so that it can respond to in, in a more relevant way. And next is emotion recognition sentiment analysis. This is very important because it understands the emotion of the user. I, I recently used one of the chatbots where I was like, I was literally upset. I, I don't have anybody to you know talk to. I messaged the chatbot telling that I'm feeling low. Chatbot immediately responded as if it's like a friend. Don't feel low, I'm here to support you. This kind of emotion understanding is, is, is possible with, with integration of AI. So uh, these are the techniques that is like, covered in conversational interfaces. And moving on to the tools, we have a dialogue flow that is by Google, which uses natural language understanding. This is specifically to build chatbots. And uh, it has an uh, integration module which supports Drupal to integrate this dialogue flow. And we have IBM Watson Assistant. So this again provides a facility for the developers to build chatbots. It uses uh, natural language processing, intent recognition, named entity recognition, and dialogue management integration and with different channels. So. Uh, it has an ability or it allows users to interact this with multiple channels, like different channels like a website or a mobile application. So, and also it provides multilingual support. And next is Microsoft Bot Framework. So it provides an SDK, with, it comes with tools and libraries, which you, which the, dev, and also it supports multiple languages, like Python, JavaScript, so developers can use it to, to build the respective, uh, you know, chatbot based on the requirement. And uh, it uses a composer, an emulator to test, build, and deploy. And uh, it, it, it also provides multiple channel and connectors uh, facility. And it specifically uses uh, a language understanding integration service by Microsoft to understand uh, the inputs and, the, and maintain the natural conversation uh, technique. And um, moving on to the next tool, which is RASA. So it is an open source tool, and it also uses natural language understanding technique, and it also uses dialogue management technique, which is mainly uh, or primarily uh, you know, targeted for like uh, uh, con like more natural way of conversation. And um, it has a visual interface like where uh, the uh, mod or where the models can be built or like maintained by uh, even a low code knowledge person. And uh, it provides multi-channel support and it builds, it has a built-in analytics where we can get the data analytics and reporting in a dashboard which, which will be very uh, uh, integrated. And uh, moving on to the next tool which is Amazon Lex. So this is by Amazon AWS, um, and it uses natural language understanding uh, again. 
and it supports multi-turn conversations. Then it supports voice and text interactions as well. So these are some of the tools that you know supports conversational interfaces. And moving on to the next enhancement is automated content management. So so the content management, like in the current era, like content needs to be dynamic, personalized, and it needs to be delivered efficiently to the users. So integrating AI with this, uh, you know, management system helps to handle the digital content efficiently, right? So in the traditional content management system, uh, the, um, you know, every task needs manual effort and it's time consuming. So with the help of, uh, you know, AI integration in the uh, uh, content management, uh, we can automate most of the tasks, starting from content creation, content tagging, content categorization, moderation, curation, and personalization delivery everything can be automated with minimal or less or like no uh, human effort so this actually uh, you know uh, frees up the space for the uh, team to focus on uh, you know setting up the content strategy and uh, enhance the uh, content quality when it comes to delivery of the content and um, it also um, you know uh, and it, like the primary goal is to enhance the content management process and provide uh, an exceptional user experience with a good quality content delivery so that is about content management and moving on to the benefits, uh, it provides a real-time content management. It's not just uh, works on the stored data, but also whenever the content is generated instantly, the content management process also uh, starts. Like it, start, it starts to read the content. It starts to understand the um, you know, intent of the content. Any moderation is required, it, it is done in, re in real time. And next is content quality. With proper mechanism and tagging and categorization and moderation and uh, other content, uh, content management techniques, the quality of the content is like well maintained and uh, it gives an exception qual content quality and it can be delivered well to the end users. So uh, next is like efficiency and scalability. Mm, so with like uh, a pr uh, with an automated uh, content management of the AI tools, the uh, efficiency of the content management system is like uh, very high and it can be scaled like based on the growing content uh, de uh, growing content or large amount of data, the uh, the tool also scales to it seamlessly. It can handle the content management uh, effortlessly, seamlessly, uh, which is like kind of challenging when it comes to human involved management. So that is one, and it provides multilingual accessibility. So for global accessibility, especially, we can translate lang you know content to different languages without affecting the context of the uh, you know content. And uh, it's it also handles user safety and compliance. It's like it ensures that the uh, uh, you know high encrypted data should be secured and uh, authentication authorization. Uh, you know process to be kept in place and um, and also like it provides privacy and consent related uh, con uh, you know uh, measures will be is taken here and uh, it, it it also has the ability to identify the anomalies and uh, reduce the spam or irrelevant content it allows users to report about the content so that we can know that these content is affecting a particular group of users and based on that feedback the models can be trained further to eliminate those kind of you know content from the uh, websites so this is one and also it provides improved seo so these automated uh, content management system knows what exactly reaches the user and how to bring the content in the top ranking in the uh, search engine. So that is achieved with this. And um, it provides data-driven insights again. So all the uh, you know AI-driven uh, en enhancements has this data analytics and they bring in a lot of data-driven insights in every aspect of you know improvement when it comes to UI. Um, and uh, next is user trust and satisfaction. As I said, we are uh, maintaining a lot of uh, user safety and compliance. We ensure that this, these tools ensures that we are meeting the user compliance, uh, like the policies, company policies, the compliances that allows to uh, gain the user trust and satisfaction. So and moving on to the types. We have automated content generation, we have content personalization, we have moderation, content governance, analytics, con uh, content versioning, and the workflow automation. So all these are the types of automated content management. And um, moving on to the techniques again, we, we use natural language processing, again, like intent recognition, named you know, entity recognition, sentiment analysis, all these are like helps to understand what the content is about and it helps to categorize the content according to the intent and the key keywords and the respective context of the content. And we, use, we, can, we use NLG, natural language generative techniques, which helps to generate content in more natural way. So there can be like a template based generation where a predefined template will be there and the content can be pre-filled, uh, can be filled into the template or it can be a narrative way like uh, where the content can be generated in a more natural way and uh, RNNs uh, so this uh, recurring neural network especially helpful in uh, 
sequential data management where the sequence of the data are understood and the sequence is maintained throughout the content generation and also it help it is helpful in content summarization like text summarization when we when we convert a huge amount of content into a small summary then the sequence of the data on the context should be retained which is helped with which is, can be achieved with the help of rnns and next is like um, convolution neural networks this helps um, to uh, uh, analyze an image analyze a video this is primarily to focus on this uh, visual um, content across the website. So this uh, identifies the object in an image, uh, in a video, it identifies the entities in the video and in an image, it helps to tag them, convert them into a text and maintain or like uh, uh, maintain them in a particular order so that it can be delivered to the user. And next is um, generative adversarial network. So this has uh, an ability to create content, especially visual content. Like uh, it, uh, you know, generates a lot of images, and it can. Um, yeah, it it also has the ability to style transfer, where it can transfer a style of one image uh, with, you know, collaborating with the other image, generating a third image, which 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 is actually maintaining the style of the image one, which is like this is primarily used to maintain the theme across the entire website, having a similar or un 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 unite, um, you know, theme across the website. And uh, computer vision, this is one more technique where it uses uh, facial recognition to identify the faces in the picture and tag them with the user's optical character recognition where the uh, images, where, where the scanned images can be converted into a stru structured text uh, for further processing and visual search where we can use the uh, images to go ahead and search. Um, and uh, these are the computer vision techniques. And next is language translation. So we have a lot of language translation techniques and models that can be incorporated that help helps to translate the contents across different languages based on the different uh, requirements, business needs, and uh, the, uh, to fulfill the global accessibility needs. And um, we have machine learning classifiers. This is basically to group the uh, content across different groups so that it can be maintained, organized, and can be delivered to the user based on the preferences whenever it is needed. So these are some of the techniques of automated content management. And moving on to the tools, we have OpenAI GPT. So this supports with content generation, code generation, and language translation, content summarization. And next is like we have Google Cloud uh, Natural Language API. This particularly handles sentiment of our content generation. It knows what is the sentiment of the requirement and generates the content accordingly. And entity-driven uh, content can be handled here. Dynamic personalization, language adaptation, automated tagging and categorization. And moving on to the next tool, it is Nuxio. It is an open source uh, CSP like content uh, service platform and it uses a DAM capability like which is like a digital asset management capability and it supports workflow automation and it supports multi-tenancy that is like maintaining content across different projects, different uh, repositories is possible here and it also supports cloud uh, based. So it is a cloud native uh, platform which helps to handle the content across to, uh, on the cloud. Uh, next is Acrolinks. So this is a content optimization platform. So it understands the co company policies and guidelines and it you know uh, ensures that the terminologies, industry terminologies is maintained across the uh, content generation. It ensures the style is maintained across the content generation and the tone guide that has to be followed across the content generation matching the company policies and the compliance. And the next is Curator. This is actually a content marketing uh, platform. So this helps in content curation. So uh, uh, whenever there is an update in the real time, that will be brought into the um, you know content uh, brought into the content, and uh, it curates the content based on the real time updates, and it distributes the content. So it also automates the workflow, and uh, it has a feature for content calendar where uh, the content can be you know posted or published based on the uh, uh, needs and the planned dates. So these are some of the tools of automated content management. Yeah, moving on to the next enhancement, it is an enhanced search. So we know search itself is a like primitive, uh, you know, functionality which which is needed in the website. So it allows users to find what the information they want from the website rather than traveling, you know, browsing through pages and pages. It helps to get the information in just small, in a click and a swipe. So AI powered search actually enhances the website search functionality by providing or by improving the accuracy, relevance, and query handling of search using AI techniques and ML algorithms. So the goal is to create more user centric, intelligent, and engaging user search experience that leads to higher customer retention, like reduce the bounce rates. So the, when the user uh, gets what they want in a, a simpler way, they will definitely not go to the website. So that we can retain the customers in uh, providing a good uh, search experience to the customer. That is achievable with the help of AI-powered enhanced search. Mm. Yeah. So moving on to the benefits of enhanced search, uh, it provides improved relevance. So it is like, 
it understands what the user wants it knows what the user prefers okay so the results can be provided in such a way matching the user preferences and it provides multilingual support like it can uh, provide the search results in different languages based on the user requirements and it opt it can optimize the search it can you know match the it can understand or analyze the user preferences and can provide the search results accordingly and real time updates so these search results uh, you know can be uh, uh, based on the real time uh, data that is happening and it gets the data from the real time and it provides literally a near real time response to the uh, end users and uh, efficiency in query handling so it will understand the context of the query it understands the intent of the query and provides uh, a uh, a more accurate and relevant response to the user that's how it, it the, the, the query handling is very efficient when it comes to enhanced search and scalability it's not just a search mechanism it grows with the more user queries it get the more search data the more user uh, queries the the tool also enhances so next is types of search so we have semantic search where the query is broken into some smaller semantics and uh, based on the analysis the search results will be published and next is personalized search where uh, the search results can be uh, you know delivered based on the user preferences if the user prefers to see videos uh, the search results will show videos first and if the user prefers to see certain kind of uh, content and that will be uh, shown first so personalization can be achieved uh, in personalized personalized search and next is voice search which uh, which allows so here like we are not sticking to a traditional method where we have to type in the search rather we can like speak uh, you know to the system we can you know we can show or we can tell the system what we actually want we are looking for so that is achieved with the voice search and next is visual search as i said we can use an image we can you know search using an image click the image post it and uh, the techniques like um, you know visual uh, recognition and image recognition techniques will help to break down the image and they will identify what exactly the user is expecting for and the results can be shown and next is conversational search where the search will uh, you know mechanism can be like in more natural uh, uh, language and uh, multilingual search having the search in different languages and next predictive search here the search knows what the user might prefer to search so it will auto suggest what the user wants to search for so it provides uh, you know multiple options for the users to uh, select and search accordingly and next is dynamic facetted search where uh, uh, the the results based on the results that is getting populated uh, the, the the facet facets are like uh, are put in place so that we can apply filters uh, and the um, facets will be dynamically populating the filter values based on the user preferences and the user focusing on so these are some of the types of enhanced search and um, moving on to the techniques yeah as i said anything related to content nlp and nlg will be definitely there so next is contextual analysis so this is like it understand what the content what is the context of the user query it knows it tries to break down the user query into smaller pieces and understands the context of the user query and next is like uh, query expansion some some cases we might uh, the, the tool might needs to expand the query so to put in some of uh, filling uh, you know uh, filling uh, contents and uh, understand the exact query context and next is ranking algorithms it is used to uh, um, it is basically used to rank the, uh, uh, the the results based on the user preferences and uh, entity recognition intent recognition again it you know understands what is uh, uh, the intent of the search query and entity recognition is on, uh, helps to identify the entities that is involved in the search query and next is visual recognition uh, so visual recognition is like it uses it is helpful when it comes to uh, uh, image search where we use visual search and then there we have uh, speech recognition techniques where, which is used in voice search uh, techniques and um, relevance feedback so it is like uh, feedback mechanisms which can be put in place to get the feedback of the search results and you know that is helped to improvise the models uh, based on which the uh, ai or uh, based on which the models can be updated every time on the feedback so uh, these are the techniques and moving on to the um, tools we have elect uh, elastic search with machine learning so it is supports dynamic filtering and uh, relevance tuning it is like uh, it it it, it fine tune the results based on the user preferences based on the user uh, likes and uh, anomaly detection it knows what is the pattern of the content and, and it, if if there is any abnormal uh, data identified it can be de de uh, deleted or eliminated from the system and uh, next is apache solar with uh, learning uh, to rank so ltr is an um, we all know like apache solar is a popular search engine and uh, this uh, integration with ltr brings more relevant search results and supports real time ranking real time ranking and algolia it provides fast and real time search 
autocomplete and uh, suggestions like uh, it predicts what the user might be searching for and it shows the preferences which the user can select and you know and do the searching and next is it supports facetted search as i said like it will obey once the uh, results are published it will provide the facets to filter out and narrow down the results and based on the uh, facet applied uh, the, the, the results can be uh, uh, given to the user and uh, coview uh, it is again a cloud based platform <coughs> So it supports relevance tuning and um, it, it supports facetted search and also search driven content recommendation. So based on the search queries we have applied in the website, this identifies the contents that will be the, that the user will be interested of and it will be show, it will be recommending those contents, those products uh, in the different pages of the website. And next is Microsoft Azure Cognitive Search. So this is a cloud-based, uh, you know, service and it has a full text search where it, it, it does not stick to one particular search type. It, it covers different types of content and uh, it uh, also supports relevance tuning multilingual support like different languages monitoring and analytics is also achieved with this so this is about enhanced search next is data analytics so data analytics and insights uh, so um, data is like a is it over oh i'll, I'll try to wind up soon <laughs> So uh, data is like everything, like whatever clicks, actions we do on the website is the data. It is a gold for us. We use, we should use this data to convert them into an inform important information. So data analytics basically does that. It, it captures the data, it captures every user interaction and converts them into an in important information based on which informed decisions can be made. We can decide what the user likes, what the user does not like, what the content has to be published to the user to attract them, to keep them engaged in the website. So the goal is basically to optimize the digital experience and engage users effectively by, uh, you know, uh, understanding what the user preferences and uh, that is achieved with the help of data analytics and insights it provides. Uh, next benefits of data analytics is like uh, personalized content management. Okay, whatever we have covered so far, whatever the AI tech announcements we have seen, like everything involves data analytics and insights. So with the data analytics and its reporting and its insights, we can achieve a lot of uh, uh, user experience announcements uh, in the system. And next type of analytics is like we have predictive analytics, we have personalization analytics, optimization analytics. Optimization analytics is used to, um, you know, understand what sections of the website needs to be optimized, what is the pain point of the user, where exactly the user drops, where the conversion rate is low. And that points can be identified in another section that can be optimized here. And next is like um, visual uh, analytics, where the uh, visual content can be analyzed and uh, updated. And we have voice and speech analysis, uh, analytics, we have uh, multi-channel analytics. So these are some of the types of uh, data analytics and insights. Yeah, moving on to the techniques. So again, like every, you know, uh, AI driven announcements includes a lot of algorithms, MI algorithms, ML algorithms. So it, we have uh, uh, date, uh, automated data pre-processing. So to, to train a model, data has to be processed and uh, like uh, automated data pre-processing can be achieved, uh, uh, can, be, uh, can be used for training this data analytics model and next clustering and segmentation uh, and time series analysis. All these can be used to, uh, you know, perform this data analytics and uh, we also use deep learning to, you know, uh, uh, break down some complex patterns and, uh, uh, you know, do the recognition and also to uh, do these anomaly detection. And next is like uh, we have, we can use, uh, uh, we use uh, text and data mining, intent recognition, predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics. All these techniques are uh, part of data analytics and, you know, the insights. And moving on to the tools we have. Um, a lot of tools actually, and these are like some tools I've picked. So Google Analytics 4, which actually uses AI driver, ML driven insights for uh, advanced analytics and predictive metrics. And we have IBM Cognos Analytics. So it is like, um, uh, it, it has an, it, it provides an interactive data visualization. So it, it provides a visualization dashboard, a, a reporting dashboard where the huge complex content or patterns is presented very simply to the user to understand, to break down the uh, complex patterns. And next is Domo. It, is a, it also supports predictive analytics, anom anomaly detection, and automated insights and we have Microsoft Power BI with Azure AI so data so it supports data preparation for training the model it supports visualization of for presenting the content once the data analytics is done and it supports forecasting so these are some of the tools of data analytics so we have covered some of the AI enhancements now so let's see like how this integration I'll just quickly give an overview of how this AI tools can be integrated with the Drupal well, basic steps so we know uh, we know like identifying an AI tool is very important when it comes to the, uh, you know, integration, but like integrating it correctly also matters a lot. So even a small miss can like create a lot of data violation problems, cost overruns and maintenance challenges and uh, a loss of time and resources. So we have, to, we should properly have a, a plan and expertise team to handle this integration. 
And um, so these are some of the steps, the quick steps that can be uh, taken into consideration when it comes to uh, AI tools with Drupal integration. Choose the optimal AI services. So be, understand our requirement and pick the right AI solution for that. And next is get the API access for that particular from the uh, respective AI tool and install and configure models. So we need to use the models uh, modules uh, to install and configure and uh, you know use the API key to provide the authentication for that and uh, data integration. So we need to establish proper data integration to ensure that the data flow between the Drupal system and the AI system works well. And we need to, uh, you know, when, when there are cases like search and automated chat, we need to have a proper user interface uh, integration. So the user interface needs to be very uh, user friendly and matching the requirements and it should go well with the uh, AI tools and services. And testing and optimization. So whatever we do, multiple levels of testing and uh, you know, multiple levels of optimization is mandatory when it comes because it has to be enhanced in every uh, then and there. And next we should focus on privacy and security. So this is a more most important section of uh, you know uh, the AI tools we pick. Like we need to ensure that the uh, user data is secured, user data is like uh, uh, safe in our system. So privacy and security measures has to be taken. It should match the uh, user needs. It match the uh, company policies and the business needs. And next is monitoring and maintenance. So once it is implemented, the monitoring continuous monitoring and maintenance needs to be put in place. And next is user training. So every user like who is not aware of the new technology that has been implemented should be trained and proper documentation. Should be in place like starting from the decision of tool and the uh, integration steps and the api integration and oh, what all the changes we have done to the integration that has to be documented properly for future references so these are some of the steps and um, moving on to the challenges i'll quickly wrap this with wrap up with this so moving on to the challenges limitations uh, Every 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 integration, every tool has a lot of challenges and in integrations. De sorry, challenges, limitations, definitely. So when it comes to AI, like we are in a crawling phase. There are a lot of challenges available, like you know, it's there in the AI tools. And uh, some of them are like integration complexity. So when it comes to integration, there will be a lot of complex uh, scenarios or like difficult scenarios if integration cannot be achieved. We need an expertise team to handle that, predict that, guide the team to do that. And like uh, data quality and content. So data quality is much needed when it comes to uh, training a model. So the huge amount of data and the quality of the data is mandatory when, when, when it comes to training the model. And we need to focus on data privacy and security, cost and performance impact, like what impact this uh, you know, AI tool will bring in when if it is not properly done. These all should be considered and interpretability. We we will never know that how this tool made this decision. So that justification should be taken care of when it comes to, you know, uh, integrating an AI tool. So these are some of the challenges and moving on to the limitations we have. Uh, so not everybody understands AI. So there will be a limited scope of understanding here. And we need to depend on a lot of third party vendors. We need a lot of training and expertise involved in. And there might be biases in the AI tool which we are used, which we need to primarily focus and you know, eliminate at the beginning stage itself. And um, limited AI capabilities so, and user adoption. User might not be familiar with the, user, uh, the, the, the product or the tool, and they might be uh, find it very difficult. So we should provide a proper user guidance to handle this scenario. And um, these are some of the challenges and moving on to the best practices. So it's very, uh, let me quickly run through this. This is like, we need to understand the requirement well. Step one, and choose the right tool, step two. And get technical expertise. N you know, involve the uh, core team to understand what the AI tool, what is the requirement is, what the AI tool can fulfill. And you know, can, you can identify what exactly can be done from this. And next is we have to prepare data and you have to ensure the quality of the data is sure. So with bad quality of data, we can end up in a worst product we end up in building a worse product so we should ensure the data quality and quantity is like proper and we should ensure the data privacy and compliance is met when we are training a model and uh, regular maintenance like repeated maintenance repeated updates you know it is needed for any ai tool and um, interpretability and explainability as i said we, we should ensure that explainability is involved in every ai tool we are integrating with and uh, user training and adaptation Adoption. So, like, we need to train the user groups. We need to train the technical team so that they are aware that what this tool basically does and how what how this tool can support the users. So, uh, I think that's all. So, like, I I was like uh, when I was like interacting with a lot of people outside, like they were like, repeatedly asking me whether it is is good or bad. So, it's subjective. So, uh, it's 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 how we are use it. Like, we use it wisely. We can you know bring a you know, very good impact on the society, but when we use it badly, like it's our problem. Like, so we have to decide how we can utilize the technology. We can, we should embrace the technology. We should, you know, grow with that, and we can have to evolve with the technology. That's that's all about like having AI in place. So that's my session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>